That's Trevor Olson from Iron Mountain with Own Love. He joins us this morning. Good morning, Trevor. Good morning, Craig. How are you doing? Good. You have a new song that we're going to be talking about this morning. Indeed. And to do so, you draw along Kevin Chown. <laughs> I did. You know, you know, uh, Kevin and I always, I we always made a point to get together if we're sort of in the area, and you know, he's in es Escanaba, I'm in Iron Mountain, so um, I was coming down here to meet you. And uh, so I, I shot him a text. Yes, you know the Kevin other day. Goes, can I go? Can I go? Yeah, you know. He's... Did, no, that's not. That's the way not how it went. went. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how it went. Yeah. He's very well, excited to see you, Craig. Tre Trevor didn't know where your new studio was. He needed a chauffeur today to find it. To find he's it. He's just been yeah. driving me around. <laughs> right, he's driving me around. Driving me around, making me feel like a moron. <laughs> Certainly, the pandemic has been an issue for you as far as getting out and performing, because that's what you were just doing. Just me, Craig, no one else. It only that's affected what, that's, me. That's what you were doing before the pandemic hit. I know, musicians as a whole. Yes. Kevin, I've talked with Kevin through the entire pandemic, and I just, I am floored what he had to go through, not being able to perform for a year and a half. And then now seeing your post meeting up with all the band members in Los Angeles here the last, past couple of weeks, Kevin, you looked truly happy, I'm assuming, I'm happier to be back in Escanaba after hearing their horror stories. I might, uh, I might tell you, but uh, that's that's for another day. It's just, you know, <laughs> but you're going to be playing this month. I will be playing this month. Yeah, Absolutely. first time in years since last March, a year ago, March. Yeah, it'll be I think 14 months, five days. Mm -hmm. That's wild. My last I count it down. Huh? Actually, never. My last gig was in February. Was it really? Yeah, it was at Bay College. A here. year ago. Yeah, oh, yeah. February. The Bay College gig here in in Escanaba, um, in February of. 2020, crazy. Crazy to think that that just was the last gig so far. <laughs> wow, because you normally play all over the country. Yeah, I was just starting to do that, um, and which is obviously quite fun because you're, you know, you're seeing different states, you're meeting different people, you're, you're doing music in different venues. It's fun, it's exciting. And then uh, everything sort of came to a halt and a standstill because nobody knew what COVID was, what was going on. And then, and yeah, as for it obviously affected everybody, but the people in the entertainment industry, it, it, it definitely affected as far as the lot you know the the crowd gathering business was you know mm -hmm. put on hold as uh, i heard you say yeah. and uh, that's un that's just the business we happen to be in yeah. <laughs> well you went into the cocoon and did some recording that's right and came out with a, a little bit of a different sound so yeah i played this song because a lot of your songs sounded like that mm -hmm. this one is more i don't know smooth Slick. Ooh, sexy. <laughs> I would say contemporary. Contemporary. I was gonna say it's a pop heavy song. It is very much so. Yeah. Well, your other stuff was too. Yeah, they were I've always but it was heard, lighter. Yes, yeah. A lot of my previous stuff was more acoustic, ballady, uh, you know, heart heart songs. So how did you get to this? Well, I wanted to I was listening to albums that had a similar sort of sonic appeal, sonic similarity, and so I wanted to make an album that had those sort of sounds, those big 808s, um, just wide, expansive choruses, all sorts of, like I said, just a more pop-heavy album. And the song, Tonight It's All You, uh, which you're going to be playing later, thank you, is um, I wrote that four or five years ago, and it was a song I pulled out of the old songbook, and it was a chorus that I loved. I loved the chorus, and it was in a major key, it was slower, everything about how the song was written and how it sounded originally, um, it's totally different now. It, it evolved into this whole new thing. You said you pulled it out of the songbook. This yes. is a song you wrote. Correct. My songbook, Craig. You wrote it a long time ago? <laughs> yeah, I wrote it in like 2017. Okay. Yeah, yep. I have, you know, so I've it's been sitting there. Just hanging out with, a, you know, a, a few of other, hundred other songs. other songs. Fermenting. Yes, there yes. A brewing, trying to, you know, come to life and come to fruition, manifest itself. But, um, yeah, it was... What made you go back and pull it out? The chorus stood out to me. It was a chorus that I always loved. I thought it was catchy. I thought it was well-written. And I don't think that about, you know, not as songwriters, we don't always think that about our own songs. You didn't record this before? I hadn't. I had recorded okay. it as far as Did I... Did you perform I, it? No, I had just a voice memo of it, of an acoustic guitar track and my vocals, just to remember the song. Just as I, as I write it, I always record a voice memo mm -hmm. so that I have it. Um, I went back, I listened to, I stumbled upon it, I remembered the chorus, which said something to me. It's like, hey, I wrote the song four years ago, I still remember this chorus and how it stood out to me. I should do something with this song. And 
Um, I took it, I changed it from a major key to a minor key, I upped the tempo, um, and it, it evolved into this whole this whole new sound, this whole new uh, the song that it's that it's become today. And so you play the guitar. I played everything on there. Yeah, I mean, um, I did. So you, as I was going to ask, you did all of the parts. Yes, in so, the song here. So tell us about the recording process. So I spent eight months recording uh, the an album. So this was uh, the second lead single off of my upcoming album called These Are My Memories, and. I recorded from May until December, making the album five, six days a week, every week, locked in, more engaged creatively than I've really ever been. It really sort of blinded me to uh, the reality of the pandemic. But I was really trying to hone my producing chops and really lock that in. I felt I feel like that's always been my weaker point, you know, compared to songwriting and vocals and everything. It's like, I want to get better as a producer. And so that's that was my attempt last year. And um, I had a, a, I learned more than I ever thought I would, and I had a more fun also than I ever thought I would. So, I mean, the recording process, it's like, I was just bouncing around from song to song. I just went where I wanted to go. I didn't force anything. I experimented with sounds. Um, everything with this song, um, no one else touched it. I did the guitars. I did the, the vocals. I wrote it. I did all the different drum sounds, mixed it, um, put a lot of time uh, into this song and the album in general. Did you end up changing the words? Uh, you said you changed the music. I did you think change the words? I did. I, I'm trying to remember exactly. I think I, I, I changed the section. You know, I, I the key is different. Um, I think I might have removed a section and added another one as well. Um, I can't remember exactly, but I used to be when I wrote a song. I used to I used to view it as if it was solidified. Like this is the song. It's Don't not going to be it. anything else. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's done. And as I've grown, hopefully as a songwriter, I'm able to look back at songs and go, okay, well, I like this part of it, but I can, I'm going to change this section. And I'm, gonna, I'm not like married to a song anymore, whereas like it has to be this way. It's like now I can much more easily like manipulate a song or change a song and, and, and be okay with well, that. Well, Trevor, that comes with age. And that's right. It's, it's called wisdom, Craig. Right, right Kevin? Yes. What do you mean I'm a kid? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so dumb. Shall we play the song? Yeah, absolutely. We shall. Thank all you. right, here is Trevor Olson tonight. It's all you. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Appreciate it. So you're working with Marv Sukolowski. You know Marv. Of course I do. Marv knows everyone, man. Um, yeah, just started working there like five weeks in. And uh, it's good. I like him. I like his wife, Jane. Um, I like my coworkers as well, the other trainers. Um, yeah, it's going good. good. Yeah, I appreciate you getting me into it. It makes uh, perfect sense to come here on Tuesdays because I'm training at the gym at 11. In yeah, in Escanaba. In okay. Yeah, so I'm here every Tuesday now. Okay. Yes. Well, if you want to hang out during the summer months in the morning, you can get here by six. Yeah. <laughs> if you get here really early, I'll let you be on. Just five your time. Yeah. Okay. So that means I have to get up at four. Yeah. Uh, I get up at right. four. I don't know what your problem is. Yeah. <laughs> just lack of discipline, laziness. That's really there's no excuse. You can stay up all night if easier. <laughs> just don't sleep. Somebody who normally comes in like Kevin was doing is a camp post somewhere up in Cheney, and so he's going to be gone during the summer months here. Okay. Somebody for <laughs> France, Jamaica, or Taiwan? Why those three countries? Like, yes. Oh, they rhyme. <laughs> Are you interested in going there one day? I'd like to go to France, Jamaica, and Taiwan. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why those. There's an LA thing I noticed in there too. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Dave. So yeah, so the chorus. The chorus. Yeah, the chorus. Okay, Kevin. You gotta ask those questions before we're on the air. All right. Okay. There's only one of me, and there's only one of you. That's those it's little you. things, dude. I'm telling you. So that chorus, that's what stood out to me. I was like, that yeah, could be, that could be something. You can see it in your head. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I personally, yeah, it's funny you mentioned the LA, LA thing. I just really like that. Like, you can visualize that. It's like, want to go to LA? Let's get on a plane and go. It's like one of those cliches in life. Dude, let's get on a plane. We're going to go to LA for a party. Yeah. And hang out with all these cool people. Of course. Yeah. That's part of life. Mm -hmm. 
Dude, imagine you're like, this is a great track. I'm right here, I really like it. Thank you, man. I'm proud of it. I'm, I like it. it. Sounds much better in a studio than it does in my cell phone. <laughs> But yeah, it doesn't. I, I don't, think, the whole it, bit I don't think it really resonates in the cell phone well. Not so much. You know, I tried. Like I try to get it to sound good through every, you know, every system. But for whatever reason, it doesn't. Okay, hey, here we go. go. Rockstar. Popstar. Trevor Olson tonight. It's all you. We're just gonna hop on a plane, go to LA. You and me, you know, Craig. When you said that, I actually Tonight thought of you, Kevin yeah. when I first heard this <laughs> oh. song the first time. Is, did you have that? Obviously not in mind because you wrote that long before you met. Hadn't even met Kevin, Kevin yet. Yeah, you know, yeah, LA yeah. is it's sort of like the archetypal party place, and so LA to uh, you know hop on a plane, let's go out. It's one of those one of those little ideas. Lots of other places too. Yeah, I mean, he's talking about France and Jamaica and Taiwan and all these. The thing I like about Trev's songs, and a, a couple of them are are this way, especially Michigan, is uh, you leave enough space for the listener, myself in this case, to be able to write myself into the lyrics. If you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. it paints a picture in my own mind, and that's why I always like listening to the to the words that you use, not just the. Not just the music itself. So. It's really so, a song about international travel. I was uh, going to say, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin right away asked, do you want to go to, uh, was it Taiwan? I said, why France, Jamaica, and Taiwan? That's, I said it rhymed. It uh, rhymes and it <laughs> sounds cool. We yeah. all want to go to France, Jamaica, and Taiwan. Yeah, I mean, why not? Those, those seem like good, as good of places as any to me. I think you'll probably end up going to all three and many more, my friend. I hope so. Yeah, yeah that'd be good. All right. Mine on it. This is one of how many songs for your album? The album is 10 songs, so it's not this massive... You know, my, first, my album in 2019 was 16 tracks, mm -hmm. and I wanted to this one, this one rather, to be uh, just a bit more stripped down, um, and so it's 10 tracks. Where can people get it? Uh, nowhere yet, because it's not out, but it's oh, going no. to be out um, coming up here, and it's going to be available... Um, obviously, the best way to get it, if you want to show direct support, would be on iTunes, uh, downloading the tracks, purchasing it. But of course, it's going to be free everywhere. It's going to be on YouTube, Spotify, um, Apple Music, everywhere. Everywhere. Free? Yeah. Like, everything's free everybody? these days, Craig. People just want music, and they expect it all the time, and they expect it free. <laughs> Where do, that's true. That's a problem. I was like shouting into the mic, sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are your social media links? I, I can't remember. Do you have Trevor, Trevor Olson Music? Yeah, if you just type Trevor Olson in on uh, anywhere. Yeah, Facebook, YouTube, Facebook. Spell Facebook. a little different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Spell Olson for us. O-H-L-S-E-N. Right, as you're yes. looking for it. Yep. Um, the, uh, why aren't you selling the album? I will be selling it. Okay. Oh, it's just not out yet. It's just, it, it just isn't released yet. So people can listen to the other songs. Yes, uh, I mean, okay. when it's out. The single is The available. single is out. The single Tonight It's On You, and then one other single mm -hmm. called I've Got a Girlfriend But I Like You, that one is out as well. Yeah. Um, so those two are out, and those are both available. You're listening to this song. You seem to enjoy it. I'm a fan of the song. No, no I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it, and I'm not, again, getting back to, like, as a songwriter, you don't like every song you write. Not every song you write is great. And I'm not saying this is a great song, but I mean, I, I'm proud of it, and I, I put forth um, all my effort and all my energy and the skill set that I currently have to make it. It's a fun song, and I could tell you were having fun with it as you were listening. To yeah, it. yeah. It's, it's, you know, you can kind of groove to it. It's got that hard, eight oh eight, uh, hard 808. It's got a, a, a very sort of cool rhythmic kick drum going on in the background. It's a huge, mm -hmm. wide, expansive chorus. Um, there's a lot going on in it, and it was, it was truly fun to make. Have you gotten any feedback on it? Yeah, most people um, don't like it at all. No, I'm just kidding. People like it. No, it's good. Um, you know, people, I, if anything, it's people, it's what you said earlier. It's, you know, oh, this sounds different from your earlier stuff, but they, but I like it. Um, so I've gotten nothing but positive. Okay. Um, and then if, but I, you know, I try not to even, I try not to seek out adulation or praise too much. Because I, I tend to like... No, but it helps you know whether or not yeah, you're doing the right you know, thing. Yes, I, I see what you're saying. But like, for me, maybe I, I'm, I, I'm proud of it. And like, I'm happy with it. And I know it's good for me. And um, I think that's what like really matters. If people like... I, but I'll, at, at the same time, I think it's a commercially viable song that people would hopefully enjoy and like and work out to and dance to and drive to and, you know. Are you going to be able to perform anytime soon? 
I hope so. I'm so I'm working on the new live show. Like I'd like to be able to bring this sort of energy and this sort of element to a live show, mm -hmm. and I haven't done that before in the past. So it seems like it's it's like a hurdle I have to get over. Something I'm I'm trying to work on and just figuring out logistics wise of having like not like having the actual sounds record going on throughout the the live performance and stuff like that. So. Um, I, ha I, have, I have had some people reach out to me as far as doing live shows. If I'm being honest as well, I just I feel rusty because uh, I haven't played in a year. So I, I'm, almost, I'm almost hesitant, I'm almost nervous to do live, an intimate live show, um, which I know I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i get over that little small hurdle as which well. Which you've done as a solo, except for the time you played with Kevin. Um, are you going to be able to perform these songs as a solo? Yeah, I would. Or a band? Yes, I, I mean, I think it's important. I think every artist should be able to, uh, you know, play whatever track it is that they're playing and, and, and do it like the album or do a, a, a stripped down version or an acoustic version, a piano version, whatever mm -hmm. version that they choose, um, they should be able to, they should be able to do it in a, in a multi, multiple different ways. I think that's ideal. I really like that one song you put out at the beginning of the pandemic because it was so timely and it was called, is it What's a Little Time Anyway? You got it, yeah. What was, I mean, was that kind of a prophetic idea that you have because I know that you wrote it I remember hearing it before the pandemic but did it strike you as as something that seemed timely when you heard it when I wrote it um that was another song fortunately where when I wrote it I was I, w I thought it was quite beautiful and I was I was really proud of it and like I said that doesn't happen with every track and so when I when I wrote it I knew right away that I would be, it would end up recorded you know some songs don't end up ever being recorded and uh, I knew it that one though it, it would be and I knew it would be going to to do something but and, is it it's interesting to me about the time aspect about what's a little time anyway it's kind of something we all had to share in common last year was there kind of an inspiration for how you thought of that hook and thought of that lyric and what it meant at the time versus what you what it eventually meant to a lot of other people Kevin he was just writing that <laughs> in many ways you're right Craig as far as like it's just it's just another song but I as I was writing it it felt special mm -hmm. um it felt deeply meaningful um universal yeah and it felt yeah again it felt like people would connect with it because in the moment I was connecting with it as a person and it and I try to write songs that are universally connectable I think was that a proper way of saying it but um good songs are good songs yeah and they just resonate with absolutely. people absolutely it could be in any genre, any any type of style, but a good song will resonate with with people and last forever. Yeah, that's the thing. They have legs. About the, the digital era, the technological revolution that we're living through. Trevor, <laughs> I really appreciate your time with us today. Good luck with that song. Thanks, Craig. That's I appreciate awesome. you having me. Thank you for playing it. Yeah, um, yeah I appreciate. it. It's good to see you, and uh, I'm I'm working a bit with your brother now. I know we'll, we'll talk about that another time. But uh, yeah, you guys are good people. I was going to talk about that at a different time. Since you brought it up, that's my that's my my secret. I want to stay on the air as long as I possibly can. <laughs> right at the very end, I go, oh, by the way, this thing. Yeah, <laughs> playing with my brother Mark. Uh, he's working with you on developing some stuff for a, a company in Minneapolis. Correct. We'll play on products or television commercials, um, television shows. He's had some stuff on that that you're moving in that area too. A different direction for you. Yeah, you know, it's just it's just another opportunity and uh, Kevin introduced me to your brother Mark and we've been I've been enjoying the conversations that we've been having and from my understanding it's just, you know, a ten song uh, publishing deal, uh, putting work you know, writing songs that I write and then those songs going on to hopefully be used in television shows, mm -hmm. commercials, stuff like that. So it's just it's another form of uh, it's just an, another part of the music business that uh, that I'm looking forward to uh, dipping my toes into. Kevin, what was the name of that song that you, you were talking with uh, him about? What's a little time? Anyway, I have not heard How the song. You? I come here time. bright and early, and you haven't listened to the tracks. I'm sorry, I'm yelling at you into the mic. <laughs> so you got to bring that song in. Absolutely. Okay. Can do. So I haven't heard that song yet. So let's give a listen. 